Hello and welcome for this new episode of Cooking with Sean and Jean. On today's episode, we are going to look at the pavlova. Ah, the pavlova. Or the pav, if you're familiar. Nothing says Australian summer backyard barbecue like the pavlova. Though it seems very Australian to the natives, it is actually a dessert made out of two French classics, which are the whipped cream and the meringue. You better be careful here, because you're gonna upset a lot of Australian viewers out there. For my recipe, I'm going to make an Italian meringue, and I'll show you three different ways of how to make whipped cream. Let me get this straight. Mm. You're gonna do an Australian recipe yes. with an Italian meringue mm. based on your French cooking knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do things the traditional way. The Australian way. The only way. Let's get started. For my recipe, you're going to need Four egg whites, 120 grams of white sugar, 120 grams of icing sugar, 5 grams of vanilla powder, whipped cream, banana, kiwi, passion fruit, and strawberries. For my recipe, you will need 35 milliliters of water, 120 grams of sugar, 60 grams of egg whites. Combine the water and the sugar into a saucepan and bring to the bowl. Meanwhile, whisk the egg whites to a firm peak. When the syrup is bubbling, delicately pour the syrup into the egg whites while continuing to whisk. Whisk at high speed until the bowl cools and transfer into a blending bag. The first and only thing you really need to do is to make the meringue. Whisk the egg whites forever until there are some soft white peaks. Add one tablespoon of white sugar and whisk until dissolved. Then repeat this step with the icing sugar and the vanilla. On a baking tray, form the meringue in any shape you like and bake for one hour at 100 degrees. This is why I like Italian meringue. Given that the sugar has been already cooked in the syrup, it's going to take less time to cook in the oven. Pour the meringue on a baking tray and smooth out the surface. Cook for 10 minutes at 150 degrees and then for one hour at 60 degrees. Ah, the pavlova. It kind of reminds you of that distant family relative you have. You see them at Christmas and at family events, and you're really excited to see them. Until you've spent too much time with them, and you start to feel a little funny. But then you forget all about them, until the next time you see them. I should call her. And now I'm going to present you three ways on how to make whipped cream. The first method is using a whipped cream machine. Put some full fat cream and a tablespoon of icing sugar into the whipped cream machine. Screw the head, add the cartridge of compressed gas, two if you have a bigger model, turn the nozzle, shake, 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 and let it sit in the fridge. The second method is using this glass mason jar and three of these tiny silicon balls. Add the full fat liquid cream through the lid, shake, shake, shake. is maybe the simplest one. Place one small bowl into a larger bowl filled with water. Place both bowls into the freezer and wait for water to freeze. Once the water is frozen, add the full fat cream. Whisk the cream until the texture is thick and add two tablespoons of icing sugar. Whilst your meringue is cooling, you can thinly slice some banana, some strawberries and some kiwi fruit. These three national fruits of Australia are essential for the pavlova, or else it's not considered a pavlova. Okay, well, according to the season, I'm not going to be using strawberries because they're coming from too far away. Uh, I bought them at the corner store. Yeah, right. Um, instead of them, I'm going to be using some French fruits, some pears, and a nice mango I find in the market this morning. You can grow mangoes in France? <laughs> Let's proceed. <laughs> the origins of the pavlova are still unknown. The pavlova is believed to be named after the Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova. No one really created the recipe. One day it just sort of happened. We know a few sources that it was created either by an hotel chef in New Zealand. On the other hand, we have a culinary anthropologist that states it was created in rural Australia in 1929. There was even a recipe in 1926 in home cookery for New Zealand of a meringue with fruit filling. And that's why you always have to use a banana 
It's the cornerstone of the Australian cuisine. And here we are again, with my old friend the pavlova. While it seemed a little complicated at first, it's in the end just meringue, some whipped cream and fruits. You can try this with whatever variations you want. Why not try this with chocolate or toffee? Or change the fruit according to the seasons. Or why change something that's already perfect? You should try this at home and send us your photos using hashtag Team Jean or Team Sean on our Facebook page. There was even a recipe in home cookery for New Zealand published in 1926 stating a meringue filled with fresh fruit. What? <laughs> <laughs> that sentence is ridiculous. <laughs> a good way to test if they're ready is the overhead trick. If you can turn the bowl upside down without the egg whites falling down, they're ready to go. Oh, oh, oh. let me help you with that. Uh, ah, no, you're gonna have to do it again. Yeah, no, that looks good on you. <laughs> no, I'm sure. <laughs> okay.